Hi guys, Samantha from Dressima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create your own little glow in the dark reef on top of an already existing shell. So here's an example of one that I have done uh, previously and I'm going to be showing you how to create this and also how to create a coloured glow in the dark uh, reef as well. So first thing I want to talk about is which shells you're going to be able to use. So I used an abalone shell. Here's an example of a few. You can see that this side's quite smooth. You want to be putting the um, clay on the rough side and I'll be talking more about why you want to be putting it on the rough side in a moment. You could use this type of shell, again putting it on the rough side rather than the smooth side. Here are a few more examples of something that would work quite well, just depending on what uh, shells you happen to have in your collection or whatever you're able to get hold of. Now an example of a shell that would not work for this are these two over here. So this is a mussel shell and this, I'm not quite sure what type of shell this is, but if you look at the front side you can see that it has a bit of a sheen to it. And that's nice in a shell but unfortunately it means that when you put your clay over the top it's not going to have a lot to grip onto so you're going to find that your clay breaks a lot more often. So smooth shells like this, not great for this project. If you want a shell you need to look for something that has a bumpy textured surface like this. So you can see on this oyster shell, one side has this really nice bumpy surface that would be great for the clay to hold onto. Other side is quite shiny. This is something you don't want to be looking for. So for the sake of today's tutorial, I'm going to be using a little abalone shell. Let me just quickly zoom out. Now before we get started, what you want to do is you just want to take a brush, because more often than not this has sand in it, and just take a brush and make sure to clean out all the sand in your shell and just make sure that it's grit free essentially. You can see there, there's a bunch of sand in there. So make sure to do that. Don't run it under water though because introducing water uh, will mean that it, the steam will want, excuse me, the water will turn into steam during the baking and it will cause lots of cracks uh, in your clay. So do not run it under water, you want to clean it, but you want to clean it dry and do that on the front as well. There we go, and this is what you should end up with. Something pretty clean and sand free. Okay, so now pop that to the side, and now I'm going to be using some white Prima. I'm just going to grab a bit off the block, we do not need a lot. So just grab that, squish that down, and run it through your plaster machine, and just condition it a bit. Okay, and I want you to run it out to about a millimetre thick. Pop that to the side, bring over your shell again and I'm going to be using some Kato uh, clear liquid clay. You can use any clear liquid clay you want. And I just want you to put a fair amount onto your shell and then you can either use your finger or you can use a brush to just coat that in the liquid clay. And this is just going to help our clay stick quite a bit. And you can see you want to get it down into all of those grooves so that there's lots of room for our clay to get a hold. Just paint the entire thing in liquid clay. You can use your fingers, I find that it's a lot quicker using your fingers generally, but if you don't like getting your fingers messy, um, a brush will work as well. There we go. Now once it's quite soaked in liquid clay essentially, just take your white. And now you can use any base colour you want. I like to use white. Uh, you could use a ecru colour, you could use um, you could use black if you want. The white uh, does end up picking up a bit of um, dirt and stains and stuff, but in general a lot of that is covered up by the actual reef, so I don't tend to worry about it. And I like how nice and clean the white looks under it. So now you just want to press that all around like so. And then just using your finger, break it off at the point where the shell's uh, bottom starts. And do that the whole way around. Okay, now it's not going to look neat at this point in time. That's perfectly fine. Now you're just going to take your finger along the edge and you're just going to smear 
that clay along the edge. And the liquid clay will help it stick. And just continue smoothing that off until you are happy. Keep in mind sometimes cleaning off your fingers can help. Like you get this clay stuck on it. You can just grab a cloth or a baby wipe or something. Clean off your fingers. Having them slightly wet can really help with the smoothing out process. Just do that around the whole thing and then I'll show you how to smooth out the top. Okay, and here is how it should end up looking. Nice and smooth. Okay, and I'm just going to use this wet wipe. Anything wet will work. And just run it along the surface. The surface does not need to be perfectly smooth, it just needs to not have huge nobbles in it. I'm just running that along the bottom just to clean up that edge. Okay. And as for the front, you have this bit at the bottom here, so what you do is you put your fingers in there and then you, f you tense against it so that you can hold it like this. And this is something quite important to learn before the sculpting process because you don't want to be touching the top for a good percentage of the time because otherwise you can squash your sculpture so being able to rip the bottom of the shell really helps and now you can see it's got a bit of debris on the top that's not to worry about just busy smoothing out the nobbles and then I can also bring this in and clean it up Okay, and that's essentially the base now you can essentially put anything you want on top of that, it's completely up to you. What I do like to do is I like to put a little coat of liquid clay on the top. It doesn't need to be a thick layer, very thin layer will work and this will just give an extra helping hand to our sculpture uh, being able for the little bits to be able to stick. However, if you're going to take a long time to make the sculpture, so if you're not going to make it in one afternoon, I would not put the liquid clay on because after about 24 hours it starts to soak into the clay and it can actually make a slightly non-stick surface. So definitely would not recommend putting the liquid clay on if you're planning on this being a fairly long-term uh, project. But there we are. We've got a nice coat. And now we can move on to the sculpting process. So I'll just pop that to the side, clean up your work surface. And now we're going to be using some glow in the dark clay. And this is Prima. And it's just the glow in the dark kind. You can use any colour of clay you want, but for today we're going to be doing the glow in the dark sort. And I'll be showing you what the glow in the dark uh, clay looks like in the dark towards the end of the video. Okay. Now something I do want to show you, this is what it looks like after it has been baked. It's not very colourful, it's got a really nice neutral soft tone to it and you guys might like that and you might want to keep it like that, that's perfectly fine. If you do want that, uh, then just take your, uh, your uh, glow in the dark and just sculpt like you would normally, don't add any colourants or anything like that. However, if you do want to uh, have some coloured clay, coloured glow in the dark, Clay. What you'll do is you'll just take that clay, roll it out, and squish it flat into a kind of sheet like this, and depending on how many colours you want, just take a bunch, and you really don't need a lot of clay for this. It's a very small amount of clay you need for the sculptures. So I have three colours that I want. So I'm just going to take three balls. And now I'd recommend putting on gloves because we'll be sculpting later and you don't want alcohol ink on your hands. So put on some gloves before doing this. Okay, there we go. Now I've got some pinata inks here. I've got the blue one, I've got a purple one, and any alcohol inks will work. And I've got this nice green one. So I'm just going to open that away from the clay. And I'm just going to add two drops. You don't need a lot of colour because it, it does reduce the amount of glow that you get from the glow in the dark clay. So if you want a very strong glow in the dark colour, don't add alcohol ink. And if you are adding colour to a glow in dark clay, 
add very little ink, you just need it to be lightly coloured. Okay. Now that purple's very strong, so I only added one of that. The blue's fairly light, so I added two, uh, three I think actually, and the green's fairly light, so I added two. Okay, so now I'm just going to rub that onto the surface to get it to dry quicker. Just wipe it off my glove, rub that over the surface, rub off my glove again and run that over the surface. You can see that purple is very dark so I just want to take a little bit of that excess and rub that off. Okay. There we go, then just clean off the gloves. It doesn't matter if your colours get a little bit uh, mixed into each other, that's perfectly fine. Now I'm just going to take this purple and don't run it through your pasta machine, it will mess up your pasta machine. Just take it and just begin blending it together. If you find that the colour is a little bit too dark towards the end, you can add some more glow in the dark clay to lighten it out again. Don't add white. And I will repeat with all of the other colours. Okay, so all three colours are now mixed up and I added probably twice as much clay to each colour because they were looking a bit too dark. Now you should end up with some really nice light colours. So now we're ready to start sculpting. Now I'm not going to show you the entire process of sculpting the uh, shell. I want to speed that up so you can see the whole process but really quickly uh, because otherwise we're going to be here for a few hours. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different types I have on here. So we have these little star pieces. We have this kind of, um, I'm not sure what you would call that, but it's just like this round coral piece. We have this domed coral piece, we have some barnacles, uh, we have a little piece over here where we have little um, fronds coming out. We've got the seagrass, we've got these little polyps, uh, and we've also got this kind of um, algae thing growing over here. So those are the types that I'm going to show you how to create in normal speed, and I'll instruct you through it. And then after that, I'm going to speed up the video. You won't be able to hear me anymore, and you'll be able to see how I create the whole thing. So then pop that to the side. What I like to do is I like to create a few pieces off to the side and then stick them on. So now first you want to decide which pieces are going to go for which colours. So I want this to be the seagrass and fronds because it's green. These I think I want to make the polyps and this I'll probably make just about everything else. So let's do the polyps first. That's the easiest bit. So you're going to take a very small amount of clay probably about half the size of a pea, roll it into a ball, grab a ball tool, and you want one with fairly small heads, you'll get used to it and you'll um, choose the type of um, ball tools you want. If you've bought my set uh, off of Etsy, the pink and orange one are the ones that you should work with. So I'm going to start working with the pink one. So you'll grab this and you'll stick the ball tool into one end and then you'll just curve that around the ball tool let me see if I can zoom in so that you guys can see that a bit better ok you can see that there, stick it in and then just gently press along the edges to create a kind of bowl shape like so ok I'll show that one more time Grab a very small piece, and the size does not have to be always the size of a half pea. You can make it larger, you can make it smaller. I do that on my pieces, I alternate between sizes. Stick it in, and then kind of create a little cone on the end. Then use your ball tool to gently go around and spread that hole out, like so. Then you'll bring over this. And then take this onto your ball tool, and more often than not you'll need a bigger head after that. Just stick that on, like so. And I think I'm probably going to start over here. Twist that on, and then I generally have to hold the polyp while I lift the ball tool back up. And that will have stuck it down. Take the next one, and this is why I like to have a few lined up beforehand. Take the next one, stick it right next to the other one twist and then lift up 
and that will be stuck into place. And what you can do to create them, make them a little bit more interesting and to also stick them is to take two really small heads, gently press together and then you can also just go with each one and gently make this wider like so. And then you would put a whole bunch of those on. Okay, so that's the polyps. Now let me show you how to do the seagrass, which is another really easy step. Just take a really small amount, you take even smaller amount than your polyps. Take that and just roll it against a ceramic tile or glass tile until you create something like that. Put that to the side. Create another one, very easy, just roll. And then you've created your seagrass. Okay. And now generally I like to work with one type um, before I move on to the next one. I generally will start with the polyps. I make like a little colony of them. Then maybe I think the seagrass should go over there somewhere and I stick that down. Um, but that is how I generally work. But for demonstration today I'm just going to be working with a few different types for one area. So seagrass will go there. Seagrass can be a little bit tricky. You just want to stick it down to the clay and then smooth it down. I'll show you that again. Let me see if I can give you a better angle. There, that's a better angle. Pick it up with your ball tool and stick it down and then press. Like so. And this is why the liquid clay is nice because it's creating a really sticky surface. And then you create an entire bunch of seagrass just to make like a really nice clump of it. So that's the seagrass. Now let's move on to, uh, let's do the barnacles. I'm going to grab some purple. Don't need a lot of purple. All you want to do is roll that into a ball. Again, about the size of half a pea. And I'm going to do this on my tile. I don't generally do it on my uh, shell until I've got a rough shape. And I'm just going to stick that down. And what I'm doing when I'm pressing is I'm kind of forming it into a semi-period pyramid shape. Now I'm just going to take a ball tool and make a hole at the top, like so. Then take a piercing pin, just some sort of sharp needle-like tool, and I'm just bringing over my preferred one. Here we are. And what you're going to do, actually before you do that, before you do that, you want to take another one and you just want to start splaying out these sides a bit. Like so. Not too much. Just a little bit, just so that it uh, enforces that pyramid shape. Okay. Then take a piercing pin and you want to run up the sides like so. And I'm trying to do this in such a way that you can see what I'm doing. It's very tricky. It's a lot more comfortable when you're doing it on your own without a camera over your shoulder. Okay. And that will have covered up the hole so then you just bring in your ball tool again and you open up that hole again. And you continue doing this until you feel like it looks like a um, a barnacle. And I might just press down on these sides a bit more. And remember, because this is all solid, one solid colour, at any point, if you happen to mess it up or you're not happy with how it turned out, too big, too small, whatever, you can always just scrunch it up into a ball again and retry. So it's very forgiving. It's a great, relaxing project. Okay. Then you'll need a blade to pick it up off of whatever you're using. And I'm just going to see if I can pick that up off the blade. No. There we go. It's a little sticky. And just pop that onto the end of your ball tool. So. Choose a place for wherever you want to stick it, and I'm probably going to stick it over there. And then you can just use your ball tool to gently press it down. And this is again why the liquid clay is so nice, it means that you don't have to put too much pressure on your pieces. Just stick that down, press in the hole. Okay. And there we go, that's our barnacle. You can make them larger or you can make them smaller, completely up to you. Okay. Now we're going to do our little starburst pieces, not really little small starburst pieces, so I just need a small amount of clay, 
uh, probably about one fourth of the size of a pea. Stick that down onto your tile, make it nice flat disc shape. Grab your ball tool, I like this one with the point on the end. Make a little hole in the middle. And then just start dragging out lines. Like so. kind of has a little star effect and again you're going to have to pick that up with a blade like so and I'll see if I can pick that up there we go and let's see where we're going to put it on this thing I generally put it around here around the bottom somewhere you just stick that down and you generally have a clump of those so that's the little starburst, very easy. Now let's grab a little bit of green and let's make the um, this little thing over here. So all you do is you grab about probably about three thirds, three fourths of the size of a pea to one half of a pea. It really does not matter too much. Grab your ball tool, make a hole in the middle. Then make a ring around that hole, like so. Then make another ring around that ring. Okay, then start from the middle and just gently start pressing out. Like so, and then just continue all the way until the outer ring. Keep in mind, these are just my ideas for the coral. There are lots of different ways you could make coral. It's a very free form idea. Play around with it and have fun. Mess and see if you can come up with some other different ideas. There are lots of ways to do this. Okay, and generally that ends up sticking around with these little staff pieces. Just gently pat that down. There we go. Okay. Um, then we're going to move on to the two uh, slightly more complicated pieces. So I think what we'll do, let's see, let's do this one first. So what you do for that, and what colour do I want that to be? I think I want that to be purple. So grab probably about the size of a pea to maybe a pea and a half. And then just press that out into kind of a random shape. Then what you're going to do with your ball tool is you're going to just create little uh, rings. And these are the bits that are going to stick up. And then just start pressing around these sides. Like so. And we want some areas that are raised and we want some areas that are not raised. So the areas that you want to be raised, don't press with the ball tool. Okay, then once I've done that, I'm going to bring over a bigger one. Because we want to smooth that out a bit. And just gently brush that. It does not have to be perfectly smooth. You just want it somewhat smoothed out so you don't have these big ball tip marks in your clay. There we go. That should do. I'm just going to rub that around the sides. Okay. Then grab a piercing pin. And actually, before I do that, I'll just pick that up. Maybe even use my fingers to gently press along these sides just to thin it out a bit. Into kind of this feathery form. Okay. There. Yeah. Then I'm going to take this. And in the raised areas, I'm going to start making these large 
holes. You want them to be fairly large and organic looking, like so. Repeat with all the raised areas. It could be slightly outside of the raised areas, completely up to you, but that's generally what you'll do. Okay, so once you've done that, just go and gently start pressing your tool into the rest in a very uh, small hole pinprick sort of a fashion like so. And this is what will create our kind of interesting coral shape. Then when you're done with that, lift it up with your blade. And let's bring this over and I'm probably going to put that over here. Just stick that down. And now it looks alright like that, but what I like to do now is I like to bring over a ball tool with a very small head. And I like to go underneath it. kind of create these raised areas so that it looks like it's kind of got little f it's um, edges have little flaps coming up and that just creates extra interest okay. and you would do that the whole way around I'm just struggling to keep that on the camera and being able to see what I am doing. Okay, and then not all of it needs to be raised, so you can just gently tap down some of the areas. And at the moment, I can touch uh, certain areas on the sculpture without squishing any of the actual sculpted pieces because I have not done a huge amount. But at some point, you're going to have to not touch the surface because you're going to have covered most of it. So just keep that in mind when you're placing things. Okay, and there we go. Very easy, quite effective. Okay, now we're going to move on to the last piece, which is a kind of cute little domed piece. And I'm going to be doing that in green. So let me grab some of that. And we want a fair amount, probably about the size of um, three fourths of a pea again. Flatten that out into a semi-round, I guess, and use your ball tool to make holes. Like so. Okay. And lift that up, flip it onto the other side, and go on to those holes again and just tidy them up. Like so. Okay. Then I'll flip that again. And I'm just pressing along those holes to widen them, make them a little bit more organic looking. I don't want them all round. Okay, then when you've done that, gently take your ball tool and just start pressing along these sides just to create a kind of dappled effect. Okay, then when you've done that, pick it up and you need something that it can dome on but they won't stick to. So I'm using this little 10 millimeter round cotton ball. Now gently press that onto there. This can be a bit of a delicate process and it doesn't need to stick perfectly. It just needs to be in a pretty much round shape there. So just fuss with it a bit and it will get there. And then because you've been touching it you might need to go back over it and gently dipple it again.
plain journal that looks a bit fun. Okay, and because it's cotton wool, I can stick my needle tool. I should be able to stick it through the bottom here. There we are. And then I just want to use my heat gun to bake that. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, you can always just bake it in the oven for about 15 minutes just to set it. Okay. Heat gun's much quicker though. And then you should be able to take that off. And now you have a sweet little domed piece. And you can put that anywhere you want. So I'll probably just pop that down over there. And then gently press that into the clay. If you're worried about it not sticking properly, you can always just add a little bit of liquid clay to the edges, but that should be fine. Okay, so those are all of the essential uh, elements. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to switch off the camera and I'm going to make a bunch of little pieces and then once I've done that, I'm going to assemble them across the piece in, um, and I'm going to speed that up so you guys can see it, but there won't be any audio. I'll probably put a little bit of music over the top. So. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this instruction and I'll show you what the finished piece looks like at the end. Okay, so I've got everything out on some pieces of paper here. I've got some nice green grass throngs over here. And then I've got the little polyp pieces. And I also decided that I wanted to have some of the plain glow in the dark here because it creates a really nice kind of, um, I'd say maybe an ivory colour on the piece. So I wanted to include that as well. So I've got some blue and some natural polyps. I've got some green and some natural grass pieces and then off to the side here if I flip this around I've got some other little bits and pieces that I've all made. So this should cover it. I might need to make more. Uh, we'll have to see. So I'm just going to pop that to the side. So I just thought I should mention that quickly because you were going to see me working with a light natural colour and you weren't going to know what I was doing. So now I'm just going to start sculpting. Okay, so I've got everything out on some pieces of paper here. I've got some nice green grass throngs over here. And then I've got the little polyp pieces. And I also decided that I wanted to have some of the plain glow in the dark here. Because it creates a really nice kind of, um, I'd say maybe an ivory colour on the piece. So I wanted to include that as well. So I've got some blue and some natural polyps. I've got some green and some natural grass pieces. And then off to the side here, if I flip this around, I've got some other little bits and pieces that I've all made. So this should cover it. I might need to make more. Uh, we'll have to see. So I'm just going to pop that to the side. So I just thought I should mention that quickly because you were going to see me working with a light natural colour and you weren't going to know what I was doing. So now I'm just going to start sculpting. And just one more thing to mention, I'm just going to be putting this on a little base of uh, blue tack. You can use clay as well. And this just means that I'm going to have uh, more area to move around. And I'm also going to have a small tile that I can move around, which means that I can move this around and I won't be touching it nearly as much. I can lift it up like that and work as I need to. So this just makes a lot easier so that I don't end up touching things that I don't want to touch.
there we are that is just about it so this stippling pattern that I did here because it's very easy you just stipple um, it creates a sand effect now some of you might be asking some of you might have already asked in the comment section uh, why I did that uh, after I put everything on instead of just using like sandpaper and texturing and then adding the stuff the reason I did it before after I had done the stuff is first off because a lot of the time you end up marring the surface when you are applying uh, your sculpture and also I find that the ball tool creates a deeper more interesting effect uh, and it also allows you to get in there and touch up on some areas where maybe the grass or the polyps have not stuck as well as they could have so it just allows you to um, do touch ups while doing texture as well and that's just generally why I do it afterwards. So we're basically finished. This is all we really need to do. If you want to, you could add some mica powder, you could add some pastels, completely up to you. But I generally like to leave it nice and organic like this, as you can see. And so now the last thing we need to do is to just very carefully lift this off of our little plastic little piece of um, tic tac. We might have to just do a little bit of a touch up around the edges but we need to remove that before we put it into the oven. There we are. Now just check on that side, all good. And just check around the bottom. I'm not touching it too much. And so I'm just going to hold it in this spot where I should not be able to drop it. And like here, I missed this little spot, or I either missed it, or I accidentally um, brushed it with my finger. But in general, everything else looks about right. So now I'm going to put this into the oven, onto this, on this tile. And I'm going to bake it for a full hour at pretty much recommended temperature. And when it sh is done, it should be nice and strong, and I can just show you what it looks like under... Uh, black light and in the dark Okay, and so it is out of the oven and you will notice that there has been a bit of a color change uh, It's kind of taken on a slightly more dusty look I guess uh, Which is fine now if you wanted to coat this in a varnish to give it a shiny look that is perfectly fine But I generally like to just uh, Leave it with this natural look so you can see and it also looks really nice on the back side so now the last thing to do, really, is to just show you how both of these look uh, in the dark because they are supposed to be glow in the dark so this is what it would look like during the day, obviously very nice and colourful, whereas this one looks a little bit more um, neutral but also looks quite pretty so now let's turn off the lights and see how they look okay, now I'm busy charging this up with a UV light uh, or otherwise known as a black light you can also charge them up with sunlight, that will work perfectly well as well. Now the camera does not pick this up very well, so I'm going to continue having to charge it with the UV light while I'm talking, uh, because it just this is not a camera that is very well built for night uh, photography. So let's turn it off. Hopefully you're able to see that. I'm just going to direct this. You can see that it glows different colours in the dark compared to this one. Hopefully it's able to pick that up. Um, let me just charge that again. But anyway, it's completely up to you whether you want to do it, the glow in the dark version. It's a little bit more of a uh, quirky way of doing it. You could, uh, of course, just go with normal colours, like normal black, white, and just regular coloured colours. You don't have to do the glow in the dark, but it is certainly an interesting way to go. It's a great thing to do as a gift for someone. Uh, just to give them a surprise, maybe don't tell them that it's a glow in the dark and then have them have a surprise. Um, but anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. It was certainly very fun to create. Hopefully you can pick up on here that the coloured version does not glow as brightly as the one that is just the normal neutral clay. So you can see there it just does not glow quite as brightly. Uh, but still works very well. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below. I really enjoyed making it. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.